And what is squash and stretch usually used for? Uh, it is used for signaling when there is movement about being compressed and also being elongated, okay? So for example, this face here of Pluto, his face is really elongated. You can feel that his face is almost going forward, right? Whereas the one just behind him, this one here, is a little bit more compressed, okay? And, to, and it looks like he is going back, right? So you can really see the movement just by squashing and stretching someone's face. And over, over just behind me, this one over here, this picture of Pluto, um, he is uh, even more compressed and it makes it look like he is staying still, okay? And not just the way that he's sitting, but also the way he's drawn. You can see that he is much more compressed. Whereas the, the drawings where he's more stretched out, you can see he, it looks like he's got movement. So the easiest way for us to practice squash and stretch is to animate a bouncing ball, okay? To animate a bouncing ball, it sounds really easy, but I can tell you it is very, very hard for a new animator to do a bouncing ball. We are going to do it with the help of coding, okay? So make sure we start up um, uh, Scratch. I'm gonna start it up right now, and then I'm gonna share the screen with you, okay? So start up Scratch. And then, here we go, we're gonna load up Scratch. So this is where we start off with, and then I want you to save your file as bouncing ball, okay? So go file, save to your computer. So this is Scratch, in case you haven't used it for a long time. Hi Kevin, thanks for your message. So um, what we do is we save it, we go file, we go save to your computer, and then we call it bouncing ball, okay? So I'm just going to name a new file over here. Okay, we call it bouncing ball. And then we go save. Okay, bouncing ball. All right, so now, first thing we want to do is we want to get rid of our cat, okay? So if I'm going too quickly, I want you to raise your hand to tell me I'm going too quickly, okay? But I'm sure everybody uh, who's been with us for a while is should be okay with this few steps. First of all, we delete the cat by pressing the garbage bin on the top right-hand side. Okay. Delete the cat. And then I want you to add a basketball. Okay. So we go choose a sprite over here. And then I want you to choose the basketball. <laughs> Pardon me. So we look for basketball, so you can search for basket, B-A-S-K-E-T. Uh, -E and then we find basketball, you click on basketball. Here we have our basketball in the middle of the stage. And then I want you to change the background. So after you've added the basketball, I want you to change the background so that it looks like a place where the basketball would make sense, okay? So you can make it very simple or you can choose any kind of place where our basketball could be, okay? So we go choose a backdrop. Yep, Yolanda? I've got a suggestion for the backdrop. Sure. It's called, um. It's called basketball two, or you can also use basketball one. Ah, yeah. So um, basketball two or basketball one, they both look great. 
I, I really like it. Let's, uh, I'm going to go basketball too, but uh, if you like, you can choose basketball one or two. Okay, well done. And that, that's a good suggestion. It's really, really good. So here's my basketball. All right. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to position the basketball in a very particular spot. Okay. I want you to change its x coordinate to zero and then its y coordinate to 100. So you see, after you've selected the basketball, you choose the x coordinate, you make it zero, and the y coordinate, you make it 100. Lucas, you have a question. How do you delete the um, X? How do you delete the X? What do you mean? So you just, um, you put your cursor over here and then you type in zero. So you, um, if it had a number in there, you press backspace uh, until you clear the number and then you make it, replace it with zero. You okay there, Lucas? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you make sure you type in the x value is zero and the y value is a hundred. Okay. X value is zero, y value is a hundred. Just to make sure that it stays there, we're going to give it a very simple command on our code now. So Three things that we have, we have our basketball in the middle. We have our backdrop, which is a basketball court or any other kind of background you'd like. And then we change our position of our basketball to be zero, 100. Zero for X, 100 for Y. Okay. Now, I want you to give it a very simple command. We're going to give it an event for when we press the flag. And then we're going to make sure that the basketball starts in this position when we press the go flag. So we go events, when flag clicked. And then your motion, go to x, y. x equals x is zero and y is 100. Kevin, the background is called Basketball 2, if you want to use that same background. Basketball 2. So your backdrop is your Basketball 2, if you want to use this one, or if you, um, if you want, you can use any other background you like. Michael, you have a question? Make sure you unmute your microphone, Michael. I'm a bit behind. Why are you behind? What are you up to? Um, I, I'm getting my background. You're getting your background. That's okay. Just uh, try to uh, just do a big background and then uh, try to keep up, okay? Okay. Okay, no worries, Michael. We're only at the start, so uh, just try your best to, to keep up. We haven't done anything tricky yet. All we have done is we've added basketball, added the background, and we have this very simple command where when the flag is clicked, we go to X and Y. X is zero, Y is 100. So I'm going to ask a question, and if you know the answer, I want you to put your hand up. So if I if I drop something, if I held a basketball up really, really high, and then I dropped it, how fast does it fall? Does it fall 
at a, uh, at a same speed all the way down? Or does it speed up or does it slow down? So raise your hand if you think you know. If I drop a basketball, if I held up a basketball and then I dropped it, is it going to speed up or slow down? Or is it going to stay the same speed when it's falling down? Ian? Stay the same. Is it going to say stay the same speed? So if I drop the basketball, it's going to stay the same speed as it's falling down? Or it could speed up. Or it could speed up. That is an uh, interesting thought uh, because uh, this is quite a challenging question. Bowen, what do you think? Stay. Stay the same? Well, in actual fact, when you drop something, it doesn't stay the same speed when it's falling down. When you drop something, it actually gets faster and faster and faster as it falls down. Does that make sense? If I, if I drop something, uh, if I just let go of a basketball and then, uh, and then it stayed the same speed as it's falling down, then it will look like it's floating as it's going down, but it doesn't float. What it does is it starts off very slowly, but then as it falls down, it's going to get faster and faster until it whacks onto the ground. Okay, and that's very, very important because um, the difference between staying the same speed and speeding up is going to make all the difference when it comes to making a realistic bouncing ball animation. So let me show you, um, show you the difference. Okay, watch this. We go, when we click on the flag, now let's try to make our basketball fall down. Okay, so we'll go into control and then we'll do a forever loop. In this forever loop, I want you to make it so that our basketball is falling down, okay? So what is the code? What do you think should be inside my forever loop? What do you think is inside my forever loop if I want the basketball to be falling down? Bowen. <laughs> To, you need to go in motion and do 10 steps, but instead of forward, you have to do it down. Ah, that is a good, so that is excellent. You can do the Y position. Down. Fantastic. Excellent, Bowen. So Bowen has talked himself into the, the correct answer, which is great. So you just go change Y by, say, minus 5 or something like that, right? Change Y by say minus five. So if you put that here, then let's see what happens, okay? I want you to, um, to do this and then press the flag and then see if it looks like it looks like a realistic falling animation. Does that look real? We'll try it again. Let's try it again, All right? There's something wrong about the animation, okay? Why, why, what does it look like? Does someone want to tell me what's wrong with it? Yolanda. Oop. Your microphone is muted, Yolanda. So um, there's two problems. Mm -hmm. um, one is it's falling through the floor. Two mm -hmm. is that it's going really, really slow. It's going really, really slow because when that's excellent there, Yolanda. So the problem is that when something is falling, it doesn't stay the same speed because if it stays the same speed, it looks wrong. It doesn't look like it's actually falling. When something is falling, it actually speeds up. It actually goes, it starts off really slow and then it speeds up as it goes closer and closer to the ground and then it goes whack. And hits the ground right and then the second thing that yolanda is right about is that um we're also falling through the floor okay so so there there's two problems here but we are going to improve both of them how uh, uh how to make it um uh, a more improved animation so watch this so this part here where it says change y by minus five this is a problem because we can't just give it a constant speed to fall down. We need to add something called acceleration or gravity. Who's heard of the word gravity? 
Has anyone heard of the word gravity before? And who wants to explain to me what is gravity? This is, uh, this is not easy. Gravity is something that, that is very hard to understand. Um, yes, uh, so, uh, Sogola. Uh, how about uh, gravity is something that pulls us to the ground? Yeah, it pulls us to the ground. Excellent. So gravity is some, uh, the, there's a key word in gravity, which is that it is also, that it is making us accelerate to the ground, right? It is not a, a constant speed pulling us to the ground because otherwise um, everything will be floating to the ground, but it doesn't. It's making us accelerate to the ground. That is fantastic. So um, uh, that is something very, very special. So in order to make that effect, we need to add a few new things, okay? First of all, we need to add a new variable. So go into variables. And then I want you to make a new variable. Make a variable and I want you to call it gravity, okay? The new variable name is called gravity. It's spelled G-R-A-V-I-T-Y, gravity. And what's gravity going to do? Gravity is going to tell us not just the speed at which something is falling, but the speed at which it is accelerating. And that's really important, okay? The speed of acceleration. So we need to call it gravity. Uh, Lucas, you have a question? When I said I actually was doing scratch desktop, then it went out and I tried to go into scratch desktop, but it taking me ages. Um, no. I lost. Uh, did you accidentally close it? No. Um, so, uh, what do you mean it's taking you ages? What's taking you ages, Lucas? No, I last could do it. It took me a long time. So, um, are you are you there now? Yes. Yeah. Cool. So it looks like that uh, you're you're back there now, Yolanda. Everything okay? I found out something. Yeah. Does that um the higher um the higher negative number you put the change right by in mm -hmm. um. But the faster it goes. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is that it's not speeding up. No matter how high you make it, it just moves down really, really quickly, but it doesn't speed up, right? It's like yeah. you can make it start off really fast, but that's not realistic neither. Because when you drop a basketball, it's not going to start off like going zooming into the ground. It starts off really slowly and then falls into the ground and accelerates. So that's what we're going to do, okay? Okay. okay. That's right. Um, when you change the Y value, um, it will make it fall faster. But that's not what we're trying to do, right? Because we start off at zero and then make it accelerate into the ground. So here we set gravity and then we go OK. And then what I want you to do is we want to set gravity to minus four. OK, in order to do that, we go into variables and then we go set gravity to minus four. This means that every time uh, we calculate gravity, we want it to decrease our y value, the y value speed by minus four. Does that make sense? So we're going to make it so that when we click on the flag, we set gravity to minus four. Set gravity to minus four. And now we need to change our speed as well, right? Because we can't have our speed be really, really slow or really, really fast. Because if you imagine, if I dropped my, if I was holding a basketball and then, and then I just suddenly let my hands go and drop it, does it just go and zoom really, really quickly? It doesn't, right? For a split second, when I let go of the basketball, it might just stay in the air for a split second. And then it slowly falls down and then it accelerates as it goes 
further and further down. So that's what we're trying to simulate, okay? That uh, we're trying to simulate when we drop the ball, we're not making it fly down. We're making it so that we let our hands go and then it's going to go stay in the air for a second and then fall down quickly. So that is how, how we're going to do it. And to simulate that, we need another variable. So first we set a gravity variable to minus four, and then I want you to make another variable called speed, because this is going to be the speed of our ball, because it changes, right? It's not a constant speed when it falls down. It's going to slowly get faster and faster. So that's why we need another variable. We're going to make a variable, and then we call it speed. So we've got a gravity variable, and then we've got a speed variable. This is very important. Otherwise, it's not going to, um, to make it a really realistic way of uh, falling onto the ground. So we've got a speed variable. All right. And then what is the speed of my basketball when I'm holding it and then I suddenly let go? What is the speed, do you think, is when, when I'm holding the basketball and then the split second that I let go, what do you think is the speed of your basketball, Yolanda? Uh, you got a mute, mute button on, Yolanda? Kind of medium. Mm -hmm. So if, you, if, you, if you're holding the basketball, the instant you let go, what is the speed of that basketball? Um. The instant you let go, what do you think is the speed of the basketball? Like medium, but mostly quick, I guess. Well, it's actually it's actually just zero. It hasn't. It wouldn't have moved straight away, right? As soon as you let go of the basketball, the speed is actually very, very close to zero, and that is going to be uh, what we're going to try and set our speed to as soon as we click on the flag, okay? But that's a great guess there, Yolanda. So first thing we do is set gravity to minus four, and then we set the speed of our basketball to zero. Okay, set the speed to zero. Does that make sense? All right, I'll give you guys another minute to make sure you've copied this code down exactly as it is. I want you to raise your hand if you are still working on it and you still need time, okay? We've got a couple of people with their hands up, so we'll just wait another minute, make sure that everybody has got all these things done. Make sure that you have your X and Y value um, zero and 100, and then make sure that we have our forever loop down here, okay? All right. Now, now is going to be uh, another little bit of, uh, of trickery, okay? We want to make it so that instead of falling down by minus five all the time, changing the, uh, the y value by minus five all the time, we want to change it by our speed, okay? So we just drag speed from our variables into here. So we're changing our speed, our y, by our speed. The problem is that we, we have our speed set to zero. So now in our forever loop, what we need to do is we need to have an increase of our speed, okay? So we go into control. And then I want you to give it a wait time of 0 0.1 seconds, okay? So you go wait, where it says one second, you change it to 0 0.1 seconds. And then we're going to put that inside our forever loop. But just before the change Y. So we click on the flag, what's going to happen? We set our gravity 
and then we set the speed to zero. That means for a split second, the ball is going to be hovering in the air. But then straight afterwards, 0.1 seconds afterwards, we're going to start to change its Y by its speed. Yes. Uh, the ball is moving down. Uh, the ball isn't moving, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we haven't changed the um the ball's uh, speed yet because the speed is still at zero. But now that I've got you on on the um <laughs> on the channel, maybe you can tell me what I have to do now. What do you think I have to do to make speed increase? Uh, I have no idea. That's okay. Well, all I have to do is, uh, we got a few people who, who might have an idea. Hold on for a second. Ian, have a guess. What do we need to do to make our speed increase? Change speed by one. Ah, that is excellent. Great guess, but not exactly not exactly what I'm looking for. But very, very close. So we can change speed by one, but instead of one, what do we put in there? Ian? We already created it. Speed? Ah, very close. We change speed by gravity, okay? So because gravity we're making gravity minus four, right? So every 0.1 seconds, we move the ball down slightly, but then we change the speed by gravity and take, make it faster and faster and faster, okay? So now if I press the flag, you're going to see the ball is going to accelerate down instead of just uh, floating down and it's gonna look more realistic. So let's try it. So press go. You see how the ball is moving down so that it is speeding up like that? So it starts off still, but then it starts to fall down quite quickly. See that? All right. But now it's a basketball, right? It's a basketball, so we need to make it bounce. And we also need to make, make sure it doesn't um, uh, uh, fall off the screen, okay? So we are going to keep improving it. Um, whoops. Uh, did you, do you have something to say? Oops. Okay. Uh, Yolanda, did you have something to say? Um, but can't we just put the forever loop on everything? on everything, well, no, we can't because we need to start our speed at zero, but then change it afterwards. And we have to start our ball at zero and Y at a hundred, and then we change it afterwards. And we also have to set our gravity to minus four uh, at the start, but then not in the loop, okay? Okay. But that is a, um, a good point there. It's, uh, it's worth examining these all the time. So now we have a ball that is accelerating down, but we still need it to bounce. And it's still not going to be very realistic if it just accelerates down and then goes plonk outside the screen. So now we are going to add some more magic, okay? We're going to make it so that if it touches the edge of the screen, then we're going to change its direction going to change its direction so we uh who wants to do the first part how do i tell it if it's touching the screen it's touching the screen what should i what's the block there yep i think there's a block in sensing as mm. it's touching um mouse pointer whatever it says excellent and that's the one Fantastic, Yolanda, excellent work. So first of all, we go uh, into control and then we go 
uh, do an if then block. And we put it inside here, okay? Inside the um the uh the forever loop after change speed by gravity. And then we go into sensing where we go if it's touching mouse pointer, but we change mouse pointer to edge. So if it's touching the edge of the screen. Okay. Change it to touching the screen. And then what do we need to do? We need to reverse our speed. So our speed is going down faster and faster, going negative, negative, negative at a certain speed. Like by the time it goes down to the bottom, you look on the screen over here, we're at speed minus 116, okay? Or uh, on, your, on your screen, it might look something different, it might have a different reading. But what is one mathematical thing I can do to the speed to make it from negative to positive? Because I need it to go bounce, to go upwards again. So I needed to change from a negative number to a positive number. What can I do using maths to change it from a negative number to a positive number straight away? Ian. Set speed to a positive number. Set speed to a positive number. That is, that is excellent. That is a good start. Uh, so we go uh, stay on, stay on the line because I want to, I want to keep talking to you. So we go variables, we go set speed to, but instead of a positive number, what we need to do is we need to change speed to a positive value of speed. So in order to do that, what can we do to the number on speed right now to change it to a positive number, Ian? If speed is like negative 100, what do I do to it to change yeah. it to positive 100? Minus, just backspace the one that says minus. Uh, backspace it. Well, that is, that is an excellent point. Uh, but this, the correct answer is we multiply it by negative one, okay? So we multiply any number by negative one to change it from a positive number to a negative number or a negative number to a positive number. Does that make sense? So any number at all, if we want to change it from a positive number to a negative number, we multiply it by minus one. If we might want to make it um, go from a negative number to a positive number, we also multiply it by minus one, okay? So that is how to change something uh, from negative to positive. So we go into operators, and then we go, the something times something symbol here. The time symbol in the operators is this asterisk, this star symbol, okay, over here. So we put it over here. And then we go set speed to speed. So going back into variables, go speed multiplied by negative one. Okay. But not only that, there's one more thing we need to do. Other thing is we also need to make sure that I want you to drag your, your ball up so that it doesn't look like it's uh, fallen off the screen. I just want it to be slightly above the screen like that. Okay, slightly above the screen. And then take a note of the Y value. So we want its Y value to be equal to this, y, this value as well. So it, when it hits the screen, the bottom of the screen, we don't want it to start bouncing from off the screen, we want it to stay on the screen and then start bouncing. So Y for me is minus 155, it might be the same for you or it might be something different. But if you want, you can just use the same value. So, uh, so all I have to do is I go into motion and then I go set Y to minus 155. All right, this is starting to look really complicated, but we've walked through step by step. So let's see what this is going to do, okay? Uh, so now you can press the flag and then you tell me what's, what's working and what's not working. What's the problem with it, okay? Let's try it again. Excellent. So let's 
So this is looking like it is working, but something is wrong. Someone raise their hand if you can tell me what do you think is wrong with our ball at the moment? Kevin. Uh, my ball just went down and then just bounced the other side. Yeah, and it's then, a... And then went up and then keeps on bouncing on, yeah. and on the top of the screen. That's right, Kevin. So the problem is that our ball is bouncing perfectly, which means that it's it's not realistic because a real ball, what happens is that the first bounce, it bounces higher, but then the second bounce bounces lower and then bounces lower and lower and lower. This is called decay, okay? So we need to make sure that our ball bounces less each time until it stops. And to do that, all we have to do is we change our um the reversing value you know the one where we changed it from positive to negative by i mean from negative to positive by multiplying by minus one well now all we have to do is change that and we're going to make it so that it we add some decay to it so i'll show you what i mean we change it the speed here to multiply by instead of minus one we go mul multiply by minus 0 0.5 that means that it loses half the energy in each bounce. Okay? It loses half the energy in each bounce. And that is going to make it look a lot more realistic. Um, this is what your, your code should look like. And then when we press the flag, you'll see that the ball bounces and then it decays like a real ball. Okay, but then it keeps on, keeps on bouncing, keeps on making these little bounces, which is not really realistic. And that's just because uh, Scratch has a little bit of an error when it comes to uh, this, these little small numbers. So what we need to do now is we need to make it so that when the ball is at a certain range of speeds, it's going to just stop moving. Okay, and this is how we do it. So we go like this, we go into control, if then block, if then block, and then what you, I want to do is straight after it's um, uh, the set Y, Oh, uh, actually, let me think about this. Yeah, after the set Y, we can go, if it is, um, this is a, a very special code called absolute value, okay? So uh, just follow, follow me. But what we're trying to do is, if the speed is uh, low enough, then what we do is we just, um, uh, we just stop the bouncing. So we go if, if then over here, and then we go if something is less than 10. If something is less than 10, and then what we go is we go speed, we go variables, we go speed, if speed is less than 10. All right, so we still have 15 minutes, uh, but this is where we're going to add our special source to make it really, really good, okay? Make uh, your, uh, your bounce really, really look really realistic. And that is to add the squashing of the basketball when it's bouncing, okay? Like a real basketball, when you bounce it, you don't see it squash or stretch. But in an animation, it's different. In an animation, we want to emphasize the movement. So in order to do that, I'll give you guys one more minute, and then I'll show you how to do the, um, 
uh, do the squashing and stretching for the basketball, okay? All right, so this is how you do it. So you got your basketball selected, and then I want you to go in your costumes. And then I want you to duplicate this costume on the left-hand side. So you go right-click, and then you go duplicate. So now you have two basketball costumes. On your new costume, this is what you need to do. Now, follow me carefully. I want you to put a box all around the basketball. And then at the top of the basketball, there's a little, little square, little dot. When you hover over it, it's got this up and down arrow. We just have to click on it and then squeeze it down slightly, just a little bit. Okay, squeeze it down slightly. But don't go yet because we also need to stretch the two sides. So the left side, we stretch out a little bit and the right side, we also stretch out a little bit. Okay. Ian. <laughs> So, so it's actually like when I when I put it low a little like a oval, the lines actually come out. Ah, uh, that's because you need to highlight everything. You need to highlight everything before you do it. So you just delete it. So watch me. You go delete it like this. Delete it, and then we we duplicate it again. And then what you need to do is you need to highlight everything. And squeeze it down and then stretch the sides. Is that okay, Ian? Let me know if you um if you're still struggling, okay? Uh Yolanda. Um right now the basketball looks more like um a rugby ball. <laughs> yeah, that's because uh, it's uh, it's stretched. So, um, but that's okay because that's um, that's the effect we're going for. Because normally the basketball is going to be round, but when it's hitting the ground, it's going to be slightly flattened like that. Okay. Okay. All right. So now you have two costumes. One costume is what it, the basketball is normally, where it's normal normal shape, and then the second one is when it's slightly flattened and slightly fatter. Okay. And then we go back into our code. So when we, when we start the code, when we hit the flag, we need to make sure that we're using the normal shape. So we go into looks, and then we go switch costume to basketball. Okay. Switch costume to basketball. And then, who wants to raise their hand and tell me when do we change its costume to the other costume, to the flat basketball? Oh, we've got a bunch of people raising their hands, sir. Um, you'll, uh, Ian. So, so do, you, do you just drag a block that says turn flatter, or do you just drag a block that says which costume to, and then you just Basketball two, yeah. Basketball two, which one? That's right. So it's, it's a switch costume to basketball two, but where about do we put it? Um, uh, Chun Sun. Um, do we do we do we put it um um after the if touching edge thingy? Fantastic! I really like that. So we will put it. If it's touching the edge, that means we've whacked onto the side and we're about to change our direction. So we go switch costume to basketball two over here. And then what I want you to do is go wait for 0.1 seconds. Okay, so we go to control and then wait for 0.1 seconds. Okay. And that is going to give you the effect 
of a really cool animation. So if you watch it now, you start it, you point. Oh, whoops. Ah, there is now something that we need to also change as well. So someone um, suggests what else that we need to do, do to change it. Uh, maybe Yolanda, are you there? Um, so I think I've got a problem. Mm -hmm. One of how it just like stays flat. That's right. So how would we fix it? Maybe we can um, do a switch costume to basketball and maybe put it like before or after it. Yeah, very good. So uh, excellent work, Yolanda. So we go switch costume back to basketball after the waiting point one seconds, okay? So now, if you press the flag, it's going to go down, it's going to bounce, just like a real basketball. Okay? Right. Okay, Chun -san. Um. So I just like, so I'd like, so, you know, I actually added like the sound, the basketball bounce sound. Oh, cool. I put it before, before the switch to costume. Yeah. And does it, does it work really cool? Yeah. Here. <laughs> Fantastic, yeah. Chun Sun. <laughs> Excellent. So just like Chun Sun, you can also add your basketball sound when it is hitting the ground uh, inside sound. So you. Uh, play sound, basketball bounce, and then you can drag it to um, uh, to when we switch the costume. Okay, excellent work. Oops, uh, Yolanda, did you want to say something? Oh, I just thought it looks really cool. It looks cool, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, something as simple as a bouncing ball is actually very hard to do. So we are doing it, this kind of animation, in a way called programmatic animation, which means that we are using computers to help us do this animation. But over the last hundreds of years, people trying to do a bouncing ball uh, find it really, really challenging. And it's a real test of an animator to be able to do a convincing bouncing ball. So even though a real basketball, when you bounce it, it doesn't look exactly like this. It's like we don't see a real basketball squash like that. But we do the animation like this because we need to add squash and stretch to emphasize the animation. So hopefully you can see that when you do add the squash and stretch, your animation looks much richer and it is look, looks more professional. And you can show your friends and family what you did. <laughs> 